Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this tutorial on the Delay Designer plugin in Logic Pro X. I've showed Delay Designer a bit in previous videos a while back, but I never did a full tutorial on it, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. Delay Designer works a bit differently than most delay plugins because you have complete control over each echo or tap of the delay. So you can use this just like a normal delay plugin to create ambience on vocals or instruments or whatever. Or you can use it musically to take a very simple idea and turn it into something much more complex. Here's a short example I created to demonstrate this. So in that example, the top four tracks are being affected by Delay Designer. Let's solo those out and give them a listen. Here's what those four instruments sound like with Delay Designer bypassed. So that's extremely simple, just a few notes and chords here and there that have been modulated with Delay Designer to have this cool sequenced groove to them, including the hi-hat rolls. So I'm essentially using Delay Designer a lot like a note repeater, but with a lot more control. I'm able to control the number of repeats or taps as they're called, the level of each tap, the pitch and pan of each tap, and the filter cutoff and resonance of each tap. So let's add another instrument. Let's use Sculpture's stock setting and I'll pull the material pad more toward nylon, and I'll also turn off the built-in delay so that we're only hearing the delay from Delay Designer. So let's add a couple notes, something really simple. I'll just add these two notes, one E-flat up an octave and one E-flat down an octave. This fits into the key of E-flat minor with the rest of the example. Let's modulate this simple idea with Delay Designer. I'm going to add it directly to the channel strip since we're using it for sound design, not for ambience, where I'd put it on an aux track, like say for a vocal delay or something. So you're hearing how now the two notes are repeating once every two beats, and they're basically on top of each other at points. That's because the stock setting has one tap, that's the blue bar with the A at the bottom. It has one tap that is two beats delayed from the dry signal. You can grab these taps and drag them around to make them shorter or longer in relation to the dry signal. So right now the sync button is on, which means that the taps are synced to the tempo in a 16th note grid, although you can change the grid. If you turn sync off, you can freely move the tap around and its delay time is measured in milliseconds. We're going to use sync for this because we want to create something that is rhythmically musical and syncs up with the tempo and beat of our song. So if I put the tap on the very first grid line, the notes are repeated at a 16th note pace because the grid is a 16th note right now. Let's create some additional taps by clicking down here when you see the pencil icon pop up. You can create up to 26 taps A through Z. So let's see what this sounds like now. Like most other delay plugins, you can adjust the balance between the dry and wet signal. Let's pull the wet signal down a bit and we'll hear more of the original notes and less of the delays. You can also change the grid value to any of Logic's available grid values, including triplet values. You can also recall the default setting and start over by going up to the top menu and choosing Recall Default. Up top here, you can click and drag to zoom and control the view of Delay Designer's tap window. You can also apply swing to your grid. 50% is no swing, and if we drag up to around the mid 60s, we'll get a nice swing groove. You can see now that the grid lines have shifted because of the swing. Let's fill these in with all 16th notes.
If we set this back to 50, we're back to straight 16th notes. Each blue bar affects the level of each tap, and if you hold the command button, you can pull up a pencil tool so you can draw in multiple levels. Up top here, you can also mute individual taps without having to delete them. Let's mute a couple of them and see how our groove changes. One thing I want to point out before we go on is that everything in this upper window controls all of the parameters down here on the bottom. So you don't really have to mess with any of the controls on the bottom when you can just use the graphic interface instead. All right, so that's all the controls on the level tab. Let's move over to the pan tab. You can see that each tap from the level tab shows up here too, including the two muted ones. So let's go back and delete those by right clicking and selecting delete taps. So adjusting the pan of each tap is very simple. Just drag the middle point of each slider to move left, which is up, or right, which is down. In addition, you can adjust the stereo spread of each tap by clicking and dragging on the blue or green bar. So this is nice if you want to pan a tap left or right, but narrow the stereo image and make the pan localization of each tap more isolated and more focused. So I've played around with the panning of each tap. Let's check it out. Up top here, instead of muting, clicking these flips the left and right channels for an individual tap. Although I almost never use this feature. Alright, so that's everything for pan. Let's check out the transpose tab. This window allows us to transpose each tap up or down up to 12 semitones, so a full octave range above or below the starting pitch. So let's try pulling up the first tap a full octave. Now let's pull another tap down a couple semitones, and another one up one semitone, just to play with a bit of a melodic idea. The buttons at the top in the transpose window just turn on the pitch shift. So if you transpose a tap, it'll automatically turn on. Alright, so we're going to skip the resonance tab for now, and move over to the cutoff tab first. In the cutoff window, you can pull down or pull up the red slider for each tap to control a low pass or high pass filter. So this essentially lets you filter out some of the highs or lows of each tap. Filters on the wet signal in most delay plugins are common, but being able to filter each individual tap is really cool. Let's give this a listen. Next in the Resonance tab, you can apply resonance or feedback to the cutoff frequencies of each tap. This feedback tends to accentuate the frequencies right at the cutoff frequency and can further alter the tone. The buttons at the top here affect whether you want a 6 dB or 12 dB filter slope. After drawing in some filter resonances and tweaking the sculpture instrument a bit, let's check this out. and tweaking the resonances a bit more as well. In most delay plugins, the only way for the delay to repeat is to use feedback, but since Delay Designer has individual taps to repeat delays, it really doesn't need it. However, Delay Designer does allow you to send the output of one tap back through the input effect, creating feedback for that one tap. You can choose which tap you want to feedback here, and you'll see it marked in red here. Alright, let's kick in all the other instruments, and let's see if our new idea sounds good with the overall musical example.
There is one more feature that I wanted to show, and that's the ability to tap in the taps in time with your mouse. But every time I try to do it with my screen capture running, the video glitches out and it doesn't work. So I couldn't show that, but I'll put up a screenshot so that you can see a still picture of it. You click here where it says start and a red playhead will run across the timeline and you can press the start button again multiple times with your mouse. It'll say tap now instead of start and you can enter in taps in time with the playhead. Then you just press last tap when you're done. I believe it quantizes the taps to the grid too. It's honestly not a feature I use at all, so I'm not terribly upset that I couldn't demonstrate it, but I just wanted to point that out. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. That is Delay Designer in a nutshell. It's a really powerful tool for sound design and mixing if you just learn how to use it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want, you can support the channel at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. Thanks for watching.